uh, good morning. It's, uh, it gives me pleasure to be here on behalf of uh, the EQ Magnet, Surya Khan. To, I welcome all of you to this conference. I should organize, I should thank Anand Guptaji for organizing this conference, Pan India. And Bombay and Delhi are probably the focus areas for that. Well, today's topic is the future of the renewables under Kikavat. Let me tell you my opinion and uh, my vision is that this 100 gigawatt will definitely happen. Why I'm saying this is today, as of today, we are at 20 gigawatt. We already co commissioned 20 gigawatt as of today. And the government has definite plans. Can I put this on? Yeah, the government has uh, definite plans of 30 gigawatt tendering for the next two years. So it is six, 30 plus 30 plus 20, 80 gigawatt is definitely going to happen. There is only one caveat that Modi government should get elected again in 2019. If that happens, I am sure that we will be able to achieve not 80, even 100. If a new government comes and if it is as bad as the Trump administration, we don't know what is going to happen. <laughs> what will be the negative. <laughs> but with the Modi government in power, 100% we will achieve 100 gigawatt. Now, I have some radical views on what is happening in the solar sector. First of all, I would say that the reverse bidding mechanism that the government is adopting probably takes more time to tender a project than execute the project. And at the end of the day, the prices that you are arriving at are numbers that only probably a few in the world can afford. And whether they are going to make money out of the transaction or they are just going to build capacity. We are not sure what is, what, is the, what is the reason why they bid so low. So government has to do a rethinking, definitely a rethinking on these long procedures for getting. What is really important today is you must get projects on ground. They should start happening much faster pace than what is happening today. You will be surprised that China probably adds more than 60 gigawatts every year of solar power. And we are happy adding 10. We need not go to 60, but I am sure we can do better than 10. Some of the bottlenecks should be removed from the system. That is what is very important for us to achieve our target. But even the way the government is going today, I am sure we will reach 100 gigawatt by the time by 2022 because we have close to five years a little less than five years four years and nine months to achieve this target one one thought that comes to my mind i'm sure everybody would be aware that the bullet train project that is going to happen from bombay to ahmedabad it's a one lakh ten thousand crore project there was no bidding in it. And the government has been able to see through it, see, see that this project happens. Probably similar, similar examples can happen in renewable energy. Why, if somebody comes with money, allow him to put up the plant. They have no restrictions on him. Let him put up the plant, let it be a 100 megawatt plus, as long as it does not destabilize the grid. Only the, the control factors that government should have is, the grid should not become, there, are, there is also one more way that we can achieve the 100 gigawatt. India has 6,50,000 villages. We select 100,000 of them or 200,000 of them and install one megawatt or half a megawatt and feed to the grid. Land is not an issue at all in any of the villages. So we should be able to achieve our target of 100,000 megawatts. I'm sure we can go much beyond 100,000, maybe 200,000 and much more. Look, because even when you're generating 100,000 megawatts, it's actually effectively only 20,000 megawatts of conventional power. Because any solar plant has a PLF of between 18 to 20 percent. I have been regularly attending conferences on the gift city that is happening at uh, 
Gujarat. It is a, it is a Gujarat international financial and technology city. The all so the, the, the Japanese and the Koreans who used to come to these conferences, they would always say, where is the beef? Where is the, where is the drink? How can we come to Gift City? Once we have signed the MOU for the bullet train project, all those inhibitions are gone. Today they come down, they want to see what business they can do. They say beef and drinks can wait. We can find it in other places. Let me go to Gift City and see how we can transact business. So it's uh, how the government gives you an opening. That is very important. And this is one classic example when that MOU was signed between India and Japan. There's all these Japanese and Koreans had no inhibitions now coming to India. They come, they want to see what business they can grab. On the downside, we should, we should know that creating 100,000 megawatts is not an issue. The real issue is how do you synchronize this with the grid? That's a very big challenge. And second, how do you give the projects that are happening a must-run status? If solar projects do not have the must-run status, they would not be able to survive. Because they are already running at 17, 18 PLF, 17 to 18 percent PLF. So they have to, they have to be connected to the grid. And biggest challenge in India is probably the load, the overall demand is going down, and also the night load is very low. Even today, you can get you can get power at at about one rupee ten paise from the grid, even in a city like Bombay, and there are no takers. So, what do we do? How do we give them a must run status? With this, I will uh, conclude my opening remarks. I will just give a few lines about Eastern Power. We primarily bring foreign investors to India. That is our main activity. We also finance renewable energy projects. Sky Power is our, one of our clients. We also arrange complete funding for smart cities and smart villages, both. That is also one of the areas we look into. <laughs> 